a father and son have been handed life in prison by a United Kingdom court after a serial criminal died after they attempted to rob them. The father, David King, and the son, Edward King, were handed life sentences by the Ipswich Crown Court on Monday after being found guilty of the vigilante killing of Neil Charles, a serial thief with several previous convictions for burglary and theft. Neil Charles had allegedly been trying to steal a car or belongings, belonging to the father and son, which was parked outside their house in Bury St Edmunds, England, and according to police, the deceased Neil Charles had tried several car door handles and home doors in the neighbourhood that evening. So, just to recap, Neil Charles, the deceased, he was killed, stabbed, he has several previous convictions for burglary and theft, he had been trying, or rather it's alleged that he had been trying to steal a car and other belongings from the father and son. Also in the neighborhood he had attempted to break into several vehicles and several homes in the very same evening in which the tragic incident occurred. So the victim is no angel. He's an active thief, an active burglar. The father-son pair armed with bladed weapons and alerted to the presence of the thief by their home CCTV cameras decided to confront the man. So the father and son knew what was going on. They knew that their car was attempted to have been stolen. They knew that their belongings had been attempted to be stolen. They knew that an active burglar was in and around their neighborhood trying to steal from the father and son as well as their neighbors. So they decided to confront the man armed with bladed weapons. The thief reportedly sustained a number of injuries. His bicycle tire was punctured whilst escaping the pair. And then the father, David King, is said to have inflicted one stab wound to the burglar's chest, Neil Charles's chest, and that one stab wound reportedly resulted in the man's death two days later. Both men, the father and son, have subsequently been found guilty of murder, with a jury unanimously agreeing with the prosecution that the two men had actively gone out together to hunt down and attack Neil Charles in what can only be described as an act of vigilantism. Police describe the two men, the father and son, as having a fascination with weapons. During the trial, they cited angry messages that the pair shared with one another after a car belonging to the family had its wheels stolen, and that was shown as evidence that the pair had a clear intent and desire to deal with any perceived criminals themselves. Here's a quote from Senior Investigating Officer. David and Edward King have shown arrogance and contempt throughout, I believe throughout the trial. At no point have they shown any hint of genuine remorse or humility for their actions, convincing themselves that they did nothing wrong at all. David King, the father, will now serve a minimum of 21 years behind bars, whilst the son, 20-year-old Edward, will be jailed without parole for a minimum of 19 years. Those are the full details. I'm going to say full condolences to the victim. Neil Charles. I'm going to give a bit of a commentary. Uh, My thoughts are pretty much off the top of my head, so not very well planned out, and you may not agree with everything that I have to say. You're more than welcome to disagree, and you're more than welcome to do so in the comments. And you're welcome to be as harsh as you like towards myself, towards my comments, but not towards the victim, okay? So I think my thoughts on this subject are a little muddled. I've read multiple articles, mainly in the US, of situations that have involved stand your ground laws. It's different in different states and I can't remember the specific details of what I'm half thinking about but there have been multiple cases, they happen all the time, where a burglar or such breaks into a property, a home, and the homeowner the tenant of the home shoots and injures or perhaps kills the burglar the home invader. And my view in those situations is pretty much yeah okay fine, I got no sympathy for the burglar or the home invader, or certainly not much sympathy for them. They put the resident of the home in a very difficult position. The resident of the home doesn't want home invaders. That's not something that they ask for. They don't want that. And they have every right, certainly in a moral sense in my opinion, to protect themselves, their family, and their property. They've got that right. So I agree with stand your ground laws in the general sense. Can those stand your ground laws be misused? Yeah, probably. You know, we've got some situations like that where somebody has technically trespassed but is not appearing to pose a genuine physical threat and they've been killed or 
were injured. So there's arguments against Stand Your Ground, but generally I'm supportive of it. In this situation, I fully understand why the father and son would be extremely angry, rageful and vengeful against this thief. The thief, if I understand correctly, is believed to have previously stolen the wheels from a family member's car, okay? Now, I've never had the wheels from my car stolen, but I can imagine that if that were to happen, I would be shocked, disgusted, and I'd be in a bit of a sticky bind because I won't necessarily have the give or take $1,000, $1,500 it would cost to replace the wheels. I wouldn't necessarily have that available. It would be a huge punishment towards me. It would be something that would make me irate. How dare this scumbag burglar go around robbing from me, putting me in a difficult situation, robbing from my family, putting them in a difficult situation, robbing from my neighbours, and they're getting away with it time and time again, and the police aren't doing anything or certainly nothing effective. I can see their point of view. I don't think I have, uh, I can't really think of the right word, but I, I don't think I'm adverse to vigilantism. I remember when I was growing up, I used to play a video game. I think it was called, I'm probably going to get this wrong, but Red Berets or something. In New York City in the 90s, early 90s, I think, you had these guys that were a vigilante group and they wore Red Berets. I think it turned out that they disbanded due to a lot lot of naughty behavior can't remember the details but at the time they were at least somewhat celebrated for taking it upon themselves to counter rising crime and i don't hate that i do not hate that if the police if the authorities are are unable or unwilling to effectively combat crime in a given area then that gives a large incentive to those that are willing and able to do so to get involved you know so the father and son got involved because there was a a hole in their security, a hole in their protection offered by the authorities. Hopefully I've articulated that well enough, perhaps I haven't. So I'm not adverse to the vigilantism, but where it's all gone wrong is by using, bringing and using bladed weapons, knives, a samurai sword and a dagger we're told, okay? That's clearly going too far. What are you going to do with a samurai sword and a dagger? Well, you're going to kill somebody with those, so don't do that. You don't want to kill somebody You want to confront somebody and put them in the position that they decide to change their ways, which is an extremely unlikely thing to occur. But that's what you want to do. And there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can try to have a nice, reasonable conversation with the person. Hey, Mr. Burglar, I know that you're a lifelong burglar. I know that you stole from my family and you're attempting to steal from my neighbors. And I know that you don't give a flying F about anyone else's property, their situation, their feelings about being robbed, their increased fear. I know you don't get an F about that but you know I'm going to ask you very nicely please not to do that again so you could try that verbal conversation approach I would think it's unlikely to be successful so another way to confront somebody about this would be I don't know perhaps not allowed to say what I think on YouTube or such but to show or exert a modicum of physical assertion a modicum of physical assertion what does that mean well you can interpret that as you like but it certainly doesn't mean carrying bringing blade bladed knives, bladed uh, weapons, swords, daggers, it certainly doesn't mean bringing those elements into the situation. And the reason for that is because it can lead to death. And as scummy as Neil Charles seemingly was, I'll say a half apology to Neil Charles's family for saying that. But, you know, let's be honest, being a burglar is a very scummy thing to do. And he was seemingly a lifelong career burglar. F this guy. But not F this guy to the point that you take his life away. I've probably used a lot of words to express myself probably a few too many Uh, so i'm going to wrap things up at this point if you appreciate the coverage please do like comment subscribe share the video as you see fit and take care